decade ago, the basic promise was that if you entered public service, which typically has a lower salary than the private. Thank you very much. Um, I wanted to hold the first press conference here for a reason. Just where those cameras sit under Father Sierra, if you listen to my speech, is my favorite place in this building. The reason why it's my favorite place is there's a little tile that this was the first chambers after we moved from Philadelphia. And that's where Abraham Lincoln's desk sat. In the back of the chambers, a one-term congressman, with all the challenges that America faced, long hours, tough work, but as he sat there, I imagine at times he would look over at Cleo. Cleo writes down what has transpired in this house. He probably looked at that clock, wondering how long it would go. That's the exact same view, the exact same clock. But if Cleo continues to inscribe what has happened, in the last five days, we passed a rules package that no longer the power rests with a few, but to the voices of America of who they elect. We repealed and stripped the funding for 87,000 IRS agents. Government should be here to help you, not to go after you. Be able to pr protect the unborn. We just protected the Strategic Petroleum Reserve where the President can no longer deplete it and sell our oil to China. And we opened the House back up for the public, something the public has not been able to be a part of for the last couple of years. That's just the first five days and we're just getting started. So we made a commitment to America and we're going to keep it. With that, let me open up for questions. Yes. Um, you've got a growing number of Republican members now that are calling on Representative George Santos to resign, or at the very least not sit on committees. These aren't just allegations. These are things that he's admitted to lying to, stealing. Why put him on committees? Well, what I find is the voters have elected George Santos. If there is a concern, he will go through ethics. If there is something that is found, he will be dealt with in that manner. Why but not? they have a voice in this process. Why not? Why not? Yes. Why not? Yes, ma'am. Yes. I'm glad you brought that up. I didn't even mention it. But the other thing we did, passed a very bipartisan bill with 146 Democrats joining with us to create a new select committee on China that Congressman Gallagher will chair. Um, and I've met with Leader Hakeem on this. This will be, Hakeem Jeffries, this will be a very bipartisan committee. Because I, I think it's very important. A number of reasons why I believe we have lost jobs to China, our intellectual property, because many times we don't speak with one voice from America. What I am trying to accomplish is get members on both sides of the aisle from all different perspectives, not just from a militarily, from financial, from agriculture and others, to bring those jobs back to America, to make sure China's not with inside America buying our farmland and others. Get a level playing field for competition. We watched during COVID for our medical supplies, them control controlling 50% of the market. We watch from our medical um, pills and others what they control. This is something that is very, not just disturbing to me, but for the future of America. I would say in this first five days is probably one of the most powerful things that we passed. In a very bipartisan way, a step forward. I would hope the Senate would do it as well, and that we can speak with one voice as we move forward to bring the jobs back to America. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Reporting and a lot of rumors about any addendum side deals, handshake no. agreements you made to get the speakership. Do the American people deserve to know all the promises you might have made to get? The yeah, they, they deserve to know. And the thing that you should look at is the commitment to America. There is not a side deal to anything. You watch the rules package, exactly the same rules package we had back at January 1st. What does it do? The only change within that is make the vacate the chair from five to one. The other thing that we did, and I'm glad you keep bringing these up because it reminds me of other things we accomplished. We watch what is happening right now with the President of the United States. Not once, but now we're finding in two different locations classified information just out there in the open. It just goes to prove, and, and we're finding out now, after being sworn in, that this was discovered before the election. 
another faux pas by the Biden administration, but treating law differently based upon your political beliefs. Treats one President Trump one way, but treats President Biden a whole different way. That's why we had to provide a new entity from our church style to look after the weaponization of what's gone on, that you want an equal playing of the law to all Americans. Oh, sorry, sorry, let, let him finish. Do you see this matter regarding the classified documents found in President Biden's home going in before that committee? I see it could go from that committee or others, but I think Congress has to investigate this. Here's an individual that's been in office for more than 40 years. Here's an individual that sat on 60 Minutes that was so concerned about President Trump's documents locked in behind, and now we find it just as a vice president, keeping it for years out in the open in different locations. I do not think any American believes that justice should not be equal to all. And we found from this administration what happened before every single election, whatever comes out that they utilize to try to falsify it, they try to have different st standards for their own beliefs, that doesn't work in America. Yes, sir. Do you trust someone who has admitted to lying about major aspects of his past, could be facing fraud charges from Brazil to have access to top secret information? I don't see any way that he's going to have top secret. If you're referring to George Santos, he's got a long way to go to earn trust. But the one thing I do know is you, you apply the Constitution equal to all Americans. The voters of his district have elected him. He is seated. He is part of the Republican conference. There are concerns about it, so he will go before ethics. If anything is found to be have wrong, he will be held accountable exactly as anybody else in this body would be. That is the fair way to handle anything you go, and that's how I'll deal with any single issue that ever comes forward. So yes, ma'am. Do, do you see a difference in that former President Trump denied repeated requests for all of his classified documents for more than a year, and President Biden's lawyers turned in documents after finding them? No, because from one standpoint, they knew the documents were there. They actually asked President Trump to put another lock on, so they were locked. You look at President um, Biden. He wasn't president. He was vice president. He held these in different locations right out in the open. He criticized President Trump. Did he utilize the Justice Department to raid President Trump? Did you think that was right? They knew this has happened to President Biden before the election, but they kept it a secret from the American public. He goes on 60 Minutes, criticizes President Trump, even knowing what he has done, and he wasn't president at the time. Now we find another location that it's at, but he refused to answer. His press secretary won't answer the questions. We, you watched them leak photos of sitting out files of President Trump. Where's the photos of President Biden's documents? Where are those photos at? He knowingly knew this happened going into election, going into interviews. This is what makes America not trust their government. You cannot have one form of law because somebody philosophically has a different opinion than you, and you can't use the Justice Department to go after people that are politically different as well. It has to be equal ac across, and what I'm finding what's happening with President Biden time and again, you go from a laptop saying it not only that it wasn't true, but utilizing your own friends to go into companies to tell them to say the same thing, to try to knock down information, to try to make sure the New York Post story couldn't be printed. You should be offended by that. You are of the press. You should be allowed to write even when you knew it was true. So. If you were to yes, sir. Look, the one thing I know, I've watched, when Republicans were in power those eight years, discretionary spending increased zero. I watched Democrat take over for four years, they increased it by 30 percent. They went from four trillion to seven trillion. I watched a 31 trillion dollar debt. I watched inflation grow under their fiscal policies. We've got to get our house in order. So the one thing I will tell you as Republicans, we will always protect Medicare and Social Security. We will protect that for the next generation going forward. But we are going to scrutinize every single dollar spent. It's the right, it's the hardworking taxpayer that actually pays it. And we want to make sure it's spent wisely and not the way the Democrats have spent it. Well, yes, I want to ask, so there's been some interest among some of your ranking fellow Republicans to possibly introduce a resolution to expunge uh, one of former President Trump's impeachments or possibly vote. What do you think of that? Is that something that you would be supportive of? Uh, I, I'd have to look. When you, when you look at, when you find at the 
final information that the Russia document was all a lie. When you watch one went through, I would understand why members would want to bring that forward. Our first priority is to get our economy back on track, secure our borders, make our streets safe again, give parents the opportunity to have a say in their kids' education, and actually hold government accountable. But I understand why individuals would want to do it, and we'd look at Speaker it. Speaker McConnell, yes. now, a bunch of Republicans, about 20 of them last Congress, called on Speaker Pelosi at the time to release the, the adjacent Capitol Hill security footage of all things that happened on that day. Is that something that you'd be interested in doing? Um, Congressman Gates said that he said that you would be willing to do that. Is that yeah, I, I think the public should see what has happened on day. I've watched what Nancy Pelosi did, where she politicized it. We're, for the first time in the history as a speaker, not allowing the minority to appoint to a committee, to pick and choose. We watched the politicization of this. I think the American public should actually see all what happened instead of a report that's written for a political basis. And so uh, I think the answer. We're looking through that. I want to be very thoughtful about it. But yes, I'm engaged to do that. Yes, Thank you, sir. On the debt ceiling, can you guarantee that Republicans will provide votes necessary to uh, raise the debt ceiling and avoid the Look, we want to make sure. We're, we don't want to put any fiscal uh, problems to our economy, and we won't. But we, what we're, fiscal problems would be continuing to do business as usual. I remembered when um, Trump was president and Nancy Pelosi was speaker, they became a debt ceiling agreement and it was a cap agreement for two years to cap the spending and make those decisions. This is something that people have utilized. But I ask all of you and all Americans, if you have a child and you give them a credit card and they spend the limit, so you increase the limit again and again and again, when does it end? We've got to change the way we are spending money wastefully in this country. And we're going to make sure that happens. It's a hardworking taxpayer to do it. Paul, how are you? Good. It's good to see you. Senator Cornyn seemed a little bit dismissive of some of the House Republican plans to, to Jake Scott and some of the other Republicans. What did he say? Um, I don't have the exact quote on me. I'm sorry. You seem to think that what happens in the House happens in the House, but the Senate needs to be bipartisan. Well, that's, inter that's interesting because because in the in the House here, um, we just had probably one of the biggest bipartisan votes to collect a select committee on China. I don't know. Is the Senate even in this week? What did they do this week? Oh, yeah, they haven't done anything. So I think the House has been very productive in the first five days. But, yes, I sat down with all the Republican senators and talked to them about ways that they could be more productive. They didn't even pass one appropriation bill last year. They didn't even pass an NDAA. So the ways we can make the Senate more productive would be great. And I think us working together will help them in the process to do that. Yes, ma'am. No, yes. I'd say they're wrong. We saw the right flank of the party um, move you on the rules package. Are you concerned that moderates will throw their weight around to do the same? Look, we, we are one party. We don't have just one idea, but we go from the Reagan philosophy. If we agree with pe people 80 percent of the time, we're all together. I like the idea of having a party so large that you have a lot of beliefs inside it, but you have a foundation of our beliefs. And uh, I think what we went through last week will only make us stronger in the long run. Mr. Speaker, do you, do you, yes. see, do you see a cap? You mentioned a cap agreement, a budget cap agreement alongside the debt ceiling. Is that is that? One of the things. Well, I laid out from an example of what happened last time. When Nancy Pelosi was Speaker, that's what transpired. Um, to get a debt ceiling, they also got a cap on spending for the next two years. Spending is out of control here. There's been no, there's been no oversight, and we cannot continue around the same process. Uh, I had a very good conversation with the President when he called me, and I told him I'd, I'd like to sit down with him early and work through these challenges because, yes, your question earlier, Paul. The House is different. The American public made a decision where they fired the Democrats and they put us in charge. We put out a commitment to America to tell them exactly what we would do if they gave us the power. And in this first week, we continue to keep that commitment. We repealed 87,000 IRS agents. We created a select committee on China to bring the jobs back. We, we continued to work for the going after accountability in this government the church-style committee of where we're going. We just stopped 
the raid of our, of our uh, petroleum reserve so it won't be sold to China anymore. We continue to keep our promises and you'll watch it week after week after week. Is there any way to have any Yes, ma'am. No, because mine wasn't ignoring a subpoena. I said I would gladly go if we got to appoint people to the committee. If it was not political, you will find the fundamental difference of me being a speaker and Nancy Pelosi. The other side will get to name their members on the committee. It won't be handpicked by me and denying the Democrats their voice. So whatever transpires out of that committee is work to Republicans and Democrats as we move forward. Well, it's a fundamental difference. Why? You said you said you're going to let Democrats appoint their own members to the committee, but you've also indicated you're not going to let I was very clear early on. Um, let me phrase something very direct to you. If you got the briefing I got from the FBI, you wouldn't have Swalwell on any committee. And you're going to tell me other Democrats couldn't fill that slot? He cannot get a security clearance in the private sector. So would you like to give him a government clearance? You asked me questions about Santos. You asked the questions about Swalwell. Not only was he getting a clearance, he was inside an intel committee. He had more information than the majority of all the members. Did you ever raise that issue? No, but you should have. You're going to tell me there's 200 other Democrats that couldn't fill that slot? but they kept him on it. The only way that they even knew it came forward is when they went to nominate him to the Intel Committee. And then the FBI came and told the leadership then, he's got a problem. And they kept him on. That jeopardized all of us. Adam Schiff openly lied to the American public. He told you he had proof. He told you he didn't know the whistleblower. He put America for four years through an impeachment that he knew was a lie. At the same time we had Ukraine, at the same time we had Afghanistan collapse. Was that the role of the Intel Committee? No. So what I am doing with the Intel Committee, bringing it back to the jurisdiction is supposed to do, forward looking to keep this country safe, keep the politics out of it. So yes, I'm doing exactly what we're supposed to do. Last question. No, right here. I'll go too quick. You both, but you go first. No, let her go first. Let her go first. That Congress has a priority to investigate Biden's handling of classified documents, but yes, you don't think that Congress has a priority to investigate Trump's handling of classified documents. Well, what it, what's an interesting question to me is. They put a special prosecutor on that. They raided Marlago when he was gone. They came in with sirens and everything else, even though. They had already met. They knew it was there. They said, put another lock on. They put another lock on it. Had they asked, they could have just picked it up. But why would they do that? Why would they go after a political opponent that way? Why would they leak photos and say all this? Why would they go through the former first lady's clothing? Why would they go through his son's clothing? Why would they raid in the manner which they did? At the same time, prior to an election, you found a sitting president when he was vice president with top secret documents. Why did they handle that differently? We're in America. We believe in equal justice. Why did they not even tell America that that transpired? How did he sit before 60 minutes knowing what he had done? How do we find out a second location and he's shocked by it? Why aren't you asking him these questions? Why doesn't he come forth to the American public? We don't think there needs to be a special prosecutor, but I think Congress has, has a role to look. Yes, last question. A lawyer or attorney to clean up. I have a lawyer. I don't know what point you're trying to get at, so help me further on the question. No, I use my hands and my own, so I think it's kind of. I think if you call a lawyer to remove something for your office, he must have known ahead of time. So I think he has a lot of answers to the American public. The good thing about that is the American public has a Congress that can get the answers. Thank you all. I hope you have a great weekend.